Hi, this is Vicki Goforth Parnell, and I have come to share a word that I received today, 8 27 24 2 p.m. I thought I would be re uh, sharing another word. I will say I give this word in Jesus Christ's name in fear and trembling. I was interceding, had a little issue happen on Telegram, and I went into praying for my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. And also went into praying for the watchmen, praying for those that were warning. And this word came forth very forceful. I have felt the Lord, and He's been angry many times, but this I felt. I don't know what else to say, but call it the fury of the Lord. So please pray about it, test it, try it, in Jesus Christ's name. It is called, My Watchmen Pay the Cost. So if you're a true watchman of God, the Lord has taken notice of that. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, please direct this prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, I come boldly into the throne room, Father God, as a beloved daughter. All your children are beloved. You have no respect to person. There's no big eyes or little U's. And Lord, I'm just humbled to be able to enter into your presence, to know and acknowledge the cost that Jesus Christ paid so I could have this privilege and honor. And I desire that relationship with you. I want to know your heart, God. Father God, I want to know your heart, and I want to know your heart, Jesus Christ. And I know that's a big thing because my mind is so small and insignificant compared to yours. But I pray Ephesians 1, 17 through 19 over my life and over this ministry, over my family, Father, over this word. And I ask you give us ears to hear your truth, eyes to see your truth, wisdom, and understanding to acknowledge and have the understanding of your truth. Lord, I tear down all veils of deception, strongholds being constructed, webs of lies and such like around your children, my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, this ministry, myself, my family, all that pertains to me directly and indirectly, including the finances, the vehicles, the accounts, the websites, the internet, everything I have to utilize for your glory to do your work and such like for living, Lord. Sometimes I have to use the internet to look things up pertaining to a school project or something with my grandkids. So, Lord, I ask you bless everything I do. Keep me from sites I don't need to go to. Keep me in all your ways. Proverbs 3, 5, 6, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. I ask you place us under the barrier of stealth and invisibility. Father God, so that there are no alerts or alarms going off as I do this, and I can get it uploaded and out, and I ask you help me to deliver this word. Oh God, I ask for mercy and judgment, and you said mercy has already been given. I'm praying about that, Lord. I'm praying about that. Oh, Lord, hey, and is she, I praise you. I praise you, I praise you, I praise you. Now, Lord, every demonic witchcraft assignment sent against me, this ministry, my family, directly, indirectly, randomly, Father God, I break it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I cancel their assignments. I wrap the demons in everlasting chains. According to Jude 6 and Matthew 18, 18, I bind them. What does binding mean in this in, in your word concerning this? You restrict their movements. I bind them and then cast them into the abyss, into the pit in Jesus Christ's name. And I do ask for grievous torments and heavy burdens, Father God, and that they remain there. Remain there. Until they're thrown into the lake of fire. Unless you say otherwise. Again I reiterate. I've already done this this morning. There will be absolutely no retaliation. Backlash. Interference. Random acts. Directly or indirectly. Or such like of all your knowledge Father God. Your knowledge of what they would try to do. Not mine. Mine sadly lacking. Yours is all knowing. In Jesus Christ's name. 
and command they will not do it. And ask Jesus Christ that you see that they do not do it. Because your word said in John 14, 14, Whatsoever I ask in your name, you will do it. When my life lines up with yours, your will for me, your ways of the Holy Word of God. So I thank you for leading me. Now, Lord, every plan, plot, gin, snare, device, I cancel, nullify, rescind, ask you to make it disappear. In Jesus Christ's name, you're the invisible God that can make things visible, or you make the visible invisible. There's nothing impossible to you. The only thing you can't do, Father God, is sin. And that's because you are holy, and sin cannot even cleave to your holy being. Hallelujah. What a holy God you are. What a Savior. What a magnificent Savior. What a magnificent Father. All power you have given into Jesus Christ. And he has given that power to us so we can boldly stand in his name and say, No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Isaiah 54, 17. We can say, Isaiah 59, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard. What does that mean? Lord, you had me study that. When the enemy comes in like a flood, like a raging water, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord rises up right in the middle and separates it, divides it. It goes to the left and it goes to the right. I'll stick with you. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll stick with you, Father God. Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit. I will stick with you. Why? I've read the back of the book. We win. Hallelujah. 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 Now, Lord, I, I want to praise you and thank you for teaching me how to pray. Teaching me how to war. Please anoint me. I'm one person. And Lord, this makes me tremble. I pray for my brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ constantly. They're a prayer forever on my lips, Lord, and for the lost. But I have to say, your will be done. In all things, your will be done, because your ways are perfect and just, even if I don't understand it, or I wish it to be different. I'm not going to interfere in your perfect will. You know my thoughts on this, you know my heart, but again, I stand back and say, you will be done. In Jesus Christ's name, send us out, Holy Spirit, north, south, east, west, to wherever it needs to be heard. And don't let me speak a word that's not from my lovely Jesus Christ or ordained from heaven, God's heaven. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. And that means the one he lives in. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bear with me a moment. I'm going to have me a sip of juice. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Pure juice. All right. I ask you, take this word of Jesus Christ in prayer. 8, 27, 24, 2, 39 p.m. My watchmen pay the cost. Now, there is personal information in here I did not want to share. But I got admonished in here three times. I had to share it. So, I am not lifting myself up. It's for an example. I petitioned and asked for it to be kept out, and he said no. It's one reason it's so late getting this word out. Lord, help me to do it. Like I said, this left me shaking. He was furious. Yes, Jesus Christ can get righteously angry. Just ask the money changers when he went through the temple and flipped over the tables and used his whip-like thing he made and drove them out. It is enough. Wagging tongues and lying lips. Not of just, just to the undefiled. My children, it is enough. False accusations. I hear them. False accusations. I hear them. I hear them. I hear them. I have told them. I have warned them. What's going on, Lord? I was praying and interceding, but still, I didn't know, know what's going on, Lord. How dare they rise up against my anointed, my chosen. I take them down now. God, what? What is it? A gathering of whisperers, the chiefest of whisperers with lying tongues. Gossiping talebearers, jealousy and envy. They are riddled with jealousy and envy. 
I will not toil with them any more. I remove my spirit now. Oh, God, no. Oh, yes, daughter. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Did I not say my spirit would not always strive with man? Daughter, I have done everything except beat them over their heads. Over their heads literally with a baseball bat. In words that you can understand. I have convicted. I have repeatedly sent my word. The correct form of my word. I have sent them understanding. I have sent them how to try and test the spirits. Jealousy. 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 Jealousy runs rampant in my children. Jealousy. But they will not take time. Even sit an hour aside to sacrifice time with me. Daughter, I am not lifting you up, but you are an obedient daughter. You do pray for those who despitefully use you. You do ask for them to be forgiven as they take their swords and their knives and strike them repeatedly into your back, talking to you as friends to your face. I'm done, daughter. I say many, daughter. I say many. All desire, all desire to speak with me, to love me, to be called my voice, to be the one that takes pride in giving a word from me. But daughter, as you know, there's no pride in it. You do it because you're called to do it and to warn. There is nothing glorified in this, the cost you have paid. You have lost your family, except for your son and his two children. You have lost your home. You have been poisoned, kidnap attempts. You have been beaten and bruised. The enemy has come in. Your mind has been tormented and manipulated repeatedly. Your health has been struck. They strike you with weapons, gizmo, gadgets, and devices, and yet you keep coming up. Why? Because you crawl to me and know your strength is in me. And you are willing to pay the cost, the sacrifice. You will stay up late hours. You will get up early. You will get up when I call you in the middle of the night to pray, to seek, to take down a word. My children, those who are jealous, those that want the, this relationship will not even get up when I move on them in the middle of the night. Let me say, this is things that I endured as I was progressing up to where I am now. I'm sorry, Lord. And then he says, later is too late. I'm sorry, Lord. I strike them now. I strike them now, daughter. I strike them now. It is through jealousy. It is through jeal envy that my own children will backlash, stab, and lie on you. And try to manipulate you, daughter. Try to maneuver into your life. Hoping and praying you will give them a little hidden word. So that they can profess it as their own. I see it all. I see it all and I'm disgusted at my own children. I have sent my Holy Spirit time and time again to convict. And they ignore it. Brushing him aside. Because they want the glory of the position. Without the sacrifice. I am done. I am taking their talent and giving it to others. No, Lord. My children who backbite and bicker. My children who are jealous and envious of those who are standing up and warning. My children, you are not willing to pay the cost. You are not willing to sacrifice your life. Sacrifice your time. Sacrifice your family. Sacrifice your finances. Sacrifice your home. As most of these have done. My children, you're full of envy and jealousy because you want what you see my watchmen possess. That relationship with me that you're unwilling to put in the time. There's no free deals, children. If you want a relationship with me, you put in the time. Hear me now, children. Those who are envious... Those who rise up in jealousy and backbite and stab my children warning. Hear me now. I see it all. 
I see how you secretly tried to tear them down, cause them to slip up. Remember, children, they are still human, but they know to fall to their knees to repent when they mess up. Why? Because they trust in me. They spend time with me. They have fellowship with me. Their lives revolve around me. When all you want is a name, fame, and glory. It doesn't work that way. I am removing the talent of many of my children who are jealous and envious because you won't use the time you have. Instead, you lust and you're envy and you're envious and you're jealous of everybody else's talent. Excuse me. Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. My watchmen pay the price. My watchmen are willing to get up if I call them at 3 a.m. in the morning. Whereas many of you, I tried to get up and you say, Not now, Lord. Let's do it in the morning. I'm sleepy. I need my sleep. You are not a watchman. You are not a warner. And you are not receiving your words from me. Try the spirits, for I will reassure you your words are not coming from my heaven. If you don't pay the price, if you don't pay the cost, if you don't get in the word and study, if you don't spend time with me, if you don't love me above all else, me, Jesus Christ, your professed Savior and Lord, then you're not getting holy words from me, but from the enemy. I say this now, try and test this as I have commanded you to do. Many of you are stubbornly and rebelliously refusing to try and test everything. I know what's of God, and you're walking right in the midst of error, giving faulty words, saying, Thus saith the Lord, when it was not me. I give you instructions in my word to keep you from falling, to keep you from being deceived, yet you refuse to do it. For one thing, you don't like the people telling you how to do it. Why is that? Because the watchmen are willing to pay the cost. Children, you are not willing to pay the cost. I remove your talents now. I give them to those who are worthy to know how to use the talents. As it is written in my holy word. Daughter, you will share this word. You will share this word. This word does not pertain to you alone, but to every one of my true watchmen, every one of my true watchwomen who have risen up and paid the cost. They spend time fasting. They spend time in the word. They spend time in agonizing prayer. They spend time. They've lost their families. They've lost their homes. They've lost their jobs. They've lost their wealth. They've lost everything. But they've gained it all. They gained a relationship with me. That far surpasses anything they can dare to hope for because they won't let go of the world. You need to repent. You're envious and full of jealousy. And again, he's talking there to the disobedient children. And when I say envious, I do not mean in a way that moves you to do better. I say you're envious and jealous, but you're slothful and lazy. You want the goods without paying for it, as my daughter says sometimes when she's talking to me. You want the goods without paying for it. Salvation was a heavy cost I paid. Your gift of salvation is free, but I paid the cost. Hear me, children, I am done with this. I am coming, and I am coming very soon. Get the sin out. Get the sin out. Get the sin out. I am not referring to my children that's really trying. 
I am not referring to my children that are envious in a good way. When they see somebody that's warning and they can tell that person has spent time with me in their prayer closet and it makes them want to do more and they do get in and spend more time and I start talking to them. I'm talking about the envious that bring jealousy because you want to move in my Holy Spirit's power. You have to prove yourself faithful for me to let you do more. And you have not. You reap what you sow. I see every knife you throw into my children's back. Your brothers and sisters in me, Jesus Christ. I see every opportunity you try to throw the word of God at them. Twisting it. I see every opportunity you can. You become a tale-bearer and a gossiper trying to tear them down in the eyes of others because you're jealous. Get the sin out. I am coming. The last minutes are ticking down. I am coming. And I am coming very, very soon. In your understanding of very, very soon. Disobedient children, do it and do it now. Daughter, again I say, you will share this message. Every bit of it that I have given you to speak to my children, those running after me, and those disobedient. I am done warning. I am done warning. I am done warning. It's up to you, children. It's up to you. Whether you're part of my bride or not. That's all, daughter, I have to say. He was very, very angry. But still loving. Please pray, pray about this. Try and test it. In Jesus Christ's name. You know how to try and test it. You should. Here are the verses. Luke 9.23 14:23 Matthew 6:20 and 33 James 1:15 Galatians 2:20 2, James 3:13 through 18 1 Corinthians 3:3 3, 3. Exodus 20:17 20, Philippians 2:2 2, 2 through 3 Ecclesiastes 4.4 4, Psalms 105.15 Proverbs 18.6-9 Psalm 6 Excuse me, Psalm 64 7-8 140 9-13 Genesis 6.3 Matthew 25.14-30 Proverbs 25.23 Romans 1, 29-32, 2 Corinthians 12, 20, 1 Timothy 5, 13-14, and 15, 16, I'm sorry, 16, 1 Timothy 5, 13, 14, and 16, 2 Thessalonians 3, 11-15, Proverbs 27, 4, Galatians 5, 21. Job 5, 2. Proverbs 19, 5. 2 Timothy 2, 22-26. Romans 13, 12-14. James 4, 7. Song of Solomon 8, 6. Proverbs 16, 28. Ezekiel 33, 1-9. I ask you again to take this to Jesus Christ in prayer. You try and test it and line it up with His Word. I've been praying about this since I received this Word. And it's getting dark here. It's starting to... Evening is starting to fall. I do pray for my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. 
even those that have despitefully used me. We're supposed to. In the end, even if they're children of God, but they're acting in an ungodly way, they're just being influenced by the enemy. You have to look past that. You have to look past the person to the source. And it makes it a lot easier. It makes it easier to forgive. It makes it easier to pray. It makes it easier when you realize because there's only one enemy. People are not your enemy. It's the spirits that's operating in them or influencing them that's your enemy. Thank you, Lord. All right. The Lord wanted me to kind of go over a refreshing of discernment. Now, many of you know that watch this channel that you can try and test by by forming questions. First John 4, 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they be of God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. False prophets, when you do the word study, and I encourage you, if I get in study the Greek and the Hebrew words, Aramaic, Greek, Hebrew, so you understand fully what the word of God is saying. False prophets in that talks about false prophets, false evangelists, false anything that's false. False friend. Anybody giving you false. I'm sorry, I'm in Jude. I want to read 2 and 3 to give you an example. So verse 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they be of God. Because many false prophets are going out into the world. Because we are being commanded to do this for our own safety. Also, 1 Thessalonians 5, 21 says, Prove all things. Hold fast to that which you have. Prove it. Try it. Test it. Verse 2, Hereby know we the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the Spirit of Antichrist, wherefore ye have heard that it should come, and even now is already in the world. So but there we get one question. When you have something talk, or you're praying about something, and you want to try and test and see if it's from Jesus Christ, Father God, if it's from heaven, God's heaven, He lives in. And I keep saying that because the firmament is, of, is called the heaven too in the earth. With this right here, you can ask, did Jesus Christ come in the flesh? That's one of your questions. If you get a no, you know it's in me, bind it, and send it on its way. But also, in 13, 14 and 15, we're going to go to 14. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he is God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath for us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. So, also you can ask through that, is Jesus Christ the Son of God? Did Jesus Christ come in the flesh? It's two questions. The other question is in 1 Corinthians 12, 3. And I don't quote it exactly right yet. I know what it means. So I don't want to misquote it. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. Excuse me. Critters. That no man speaketh by the Spirit Spirit of God calls Jesus cursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. We know this is referring to Jesus Christ. When you read the rest of the chapter, that makes a difference. Because a fallen angel and the enemy can say, Jesus is Lord, but not Jesus Christ is Lord, is my Lord, my Lord. And that no man in this, again, doing the Greek study, the Hebrew study, this is Greek. No man means it's G3762, the Strong's number. If you have a concordance or you want to study it, just put it in the internet. Strong's number. And it means not even one man, woman, child, or thing. None, nobody, nothing, neither, anything, never, not can say Jesus Christ is Lord except through the Holy Spirit. Which means only those that have been redeemed can say Jesus Christ is my Lord. Because it's through the Holy Spirit. When you get saved, the Holy Spirit comes in. 
that's how you get your three questions. And you can ask that. Oh, it got me really good. Praise the Lord. Should have prayed <laughs> better. So, when you hear something like you're praying, Lord, I received a word from you. Is this from you? And you hear in your mind, yes, it is. Spirit that said this, Jesus Christ come in the flesh. You get a yes. Go to the other three questions. You get a no in any of them, you know it is the enemy. Now, I've had people say that sometimes they always get yeses. Stand on John 10, verse, actually, 3, 4, 5, 14, and 27. That says, you know his voice and another you will not follow. And also, what I do most times before I start praying, I bind every form of deception, veils, Lying spirits, gizmo, gadgets, and weapons because they do have machines such as our government has. The voice of God machine where they directed at people and it pointed in their mind. And it sounds like God is speaking to them. They think God is speaking to them. It's really the enemy. Such is the way of evil in. Alright, I want to go over a few other things though. Anytime you start also, I recommend... Always repent even before you start trying the testing. Because if there's any kind of agreement with you and the enemy, that's legal access for him to come in and mess with you. Here are some scriptures. Again, 1 John 4, 1-3, through 3, verse 6 and 13-15. through 15. There's also 2 John 1, 7, 1 Corinthians 12, 3. Ephesians 5, 9-10. Job 12.11, 1 Thessalonians 5.20-21, and Acts 17.11 is an example. I think it was the Bereans. Paul preached to the Bereans, and they examined the scripture to make sure he was preaching the truth. That's an example for us. Alright. I want you to understand, too, when you are, if you're using a KJV. The highlighted words. Um, in in the. Um, the italicized words. That's what I'm going to say. That are in there. Are not the original translation. Those have been added by translators. To help the reader. So you have in 1 John 2, 23, it says, Whosoever denied the Son, the same hath not the Father. And then you have in italics, But he that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. So therefore, that is not in the original. And I will say further, when I went to the Geneva Bible, which is the Bible before the KJV, it's not in there. Things have been done. But you still pray and ask Jesus Christ, or Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ's name, to teach you the truth of the Word, the original copy, Jesus Christ in heaven. He was a word made into flesh. And you will get the truth. There's things though, other things to do. You have fruits to discern. Fruits. The product of the labor. You, for example, is this ministry, use this ministry. Are people being saved? Yes, that's an example of a good fruit. Are Good or bad, good or bad fruit. Results that can be seen. Fruit watcher. That's what I call it. I'm a fruit watcher. I really am. So you have fruits to discern. You have bad fruits, which are the works of the flesh. The results of adultery, fornication, lying, backbiting. Galatians 5, 19 through 21 are examples that you can look at to watch for. 1 Timothy 1, 9 through 10. 2 Timothy 3, 2-9, and 4, 3-5. Another thing to watch for are they a lover of money. Because the love of money is the root of all evil. The Lord just brought that to my mind. If a minister or somebody has a love for money, that is definitely not a sign of a good fruit. We're supposed to trust the Lord, not money. Okay, another example of bad fruit. 1 Corinthians 6, 9-10. But then you also have good fruits. Fruits of the Holy Spirit, joy, peace, love, things like that. Found in Galatians 5, 22 through 23. Ephesians 5, 9 through 10, 18 through 21. 
and then 2 Timothy 2, 22-26. So we are given examples and things that we can watch for also because you have more than one way to try, test, and discern. All right. Matthew 7, 15-20. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing. Again, check that word false prophet. It's going to be false everything, if I remember correctly. But inwardly are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Which means they can be perfect, 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 and then a slight variance. It may not be a big notice. It might be something the Holy Spirit jumps in you and says, that's not right, or what was that? Just a slight seek the Lord anytime that happens. Know them by the fruit. Do men gather grapes or thorns or figs or thistles? Even so, every good fruit bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is shewn down and cast into the fire. Judgment Day goes in the lake of fire. Wherefore, by their fruit ye shall know them. Wherefore, by their fruit. Don't give up watching somebody if you're still trying and testing them. Don't, give, don't just say, oh, okay, so they're right. Keep watching. Even I myself as, well, I mentioned not long ago. There was a, a an acquaintance that I found out was truly not of God. And um, really bummed me out, is all I can say. I tried and tested, they were right on spot, right on spot, you know, word, 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 and things were lining up. He was worked prophetically. This is somebody I've not shared, mentioned before. It's somebody I just knew. And then all of a sudden, bam, I hear a word, and it's totally different, opposite from what Jesus Christ has been telling me for many years. And I just stopped and said, Lord, what is this? He said, try, test, discern, pray. And I've, I've been going down past acquaintances, friends. I'm going down testing everybody. I'll just tell you, I'm late for the Lord. And um, sure enough, he turned to be what I call a well-hidden mole. Okay. Now, in Mark 7, 18 through 23, I'm not going to read all this because we don't, ha don't have time. Tell them what it is. This is where it talks about what comes out of a man defileth him. So you listen to somebody and eventually the truth will come out. When it said somebody professing to love Jesus Christ, for example, I'm up here. Am I trying to lead you to Jesus Christ and telling you Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven? You need to be saved. You need to repent of your sin. Sin will keep you out of heaven. Or am I trying to tell you there's other ways to heaven? Or that that's okay. God loves you anyways. You know, don't worry about your life. God loves you. That's wrong. That's sin. That'll turn you to hell. Just, I'm just saying. You've got to check the fruit. Be a fruit checker, fruit watcher. 2 Timothy 1, 13-4. Hold fast. That means guard it. The form of sound words which thou hast heard me in faith and love, which in Christ Jesus. That good thing, the divine truth of Jesus Christ, that good thing, the divine truth of Jesus Christ, what he's talking about, which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. When Jesus Christ gives you a revelation and you know it's from Him, don't let go of it. Now understand there may be more pieces of something coming later because we're in time days and mysteries are being revealed. So allow for more pieces. But like if He tells you that, Lord, what's a good example? You've tested and tried. And you pull down all veils of deception and you, you know, and, and the Lord reveals to you, hey, this person is of me. And you repeatedly try them and get that. Hold fast to what you know. What you know of the Word of God, don't let nobody sway you. Now, be open for correction, though, for correction and reproof. I don't know it all. I will never know it all. I ask the Lord Jesus Christ. If I'm wrong, write me. That's my, my saying. If I'm wrong, write me. And even when things are brought up, 
like a little incident today. I stopped and I said, Lord, that's not right. But how is it not right? I knew in my spirit and he spoke to me then. I started seeking him before I jumped in and said, hey, hey, hey. No, no, no. Seek and be led by the Holy Spirit in all things. When you try and test the spirit, it means you're trying to see if it's from God or of the devil. It's also called discerning. And discerning means knowing what's right and what's almost right. That's discernment. Because the enemy is so close to the truth. He knows the word of God. He knows the church scene. He knows how to act. Many of your pastors and many of your evangelists, many of your youth leaders, many of the leaders are fallen angels and, and witches and warlocks and people hidden inside. They know. The marine kingdom will take people and even birth people and train them from the time they're little up to infiltrate churches. Human agents. And they're almost, to me in some ways, they want to prove their worthiness and they are more lethal at times than just some of the others. But God, greater is he that is in us and he that is in the world. They still have demons you can bind them. In Jesus Christ's name. Here's some questions that doing some research on the internet, but also the Holy Spirit led me, that has helped me myself in discerning. What fruit does the Spirit inside that person or what you're... And, and realize when you're proving or trying to test somebody, you're not testing that individual. You're the Spirit inside them they're operating in. That's what you're testing. Or the Spirit talking to you. Or somebody on the platform and, you, and, and they're preaching and, and you don't feel like that's right. You can discern that spirit behind it and the spirit inside the person. Because it may be the person is just in error and doesn't know right. Still truly a child of God. But has been taught wrong and is preaching what he is taught in error. So it could be a spirit of error that he's operating in. But him still be a child of God. That's why you have to discern everything and not throw everything away. What fruit does the spirit inside, inside what you're testing produce? Two. Do they preach, teach according to Scripture? 2 Timothy 3.16 talks about Scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Titus 1.2, God cannot lie. So are they preaching the Word of God? And there's a lot of people that have, have different views and different understanding. So if something sounds off, you need to get in the Word and find out the truth yourself. Because there's a lot of truth with deception discernment what's right and what's almost right okay now to do the preach teach and according to scripture you need a good understanding of the word of god a girl good foundation so that when something's said and you go oh that ain't right that's not what scripture says now, and study and research a matter with the sweet holy spirit's help example again the brain believers examine the scripture to verify Paul's words. Acts 17.11 That's an example for us showing we need to do it. Does the Spirit glorify God? 1 Peter 2.12 tells us that it needs to glorify God. The Holy Spirit and those led by Him will seek to honor and glorify God. What John 14.26 says. And also that He will teach us and lead us. So it's a spirit inside somebody trying to glorify God or glorify self. Does the spirit build up the body of Christ? Someone speaking under the leading of the sweet Holy Spirit will have a message that seeks to draw the body closer to Jesus Christ and obedience to him. Does it reprove, correct, edify, instruct in righteousness? Yes, even reproving, like this word, it's to correct and help the body of Christ. Five, listen to what the Holy Spirit is telling you. If you are in tune with the Holy Spirit, meaning you have been learning and already discerning, and there's ways the Holy Spirit can speak to you. Some people, they just get a, a, a feeling. Some people get, it's just different ways. Used to, when I, something was off, I would just get like a, mm, you know, just a, in my knowing, like, that ain't right. 
sometimes it can be, you know, I call it a nudge. So there's different ways. Um, if you are in tune with the Holy Spirit, listening to Him in your daily life, it's important to do that. Then He will let you know by alerting you somehow something is off. And that somehow is going to be however He already moves and works in your life because each person is different. Even if it turns out to be your misunderstanding of what's being spoken or taught or the person's spirit is false. Again, if you hear something that is not according to how you believe or what you understand, it doesn't necessarily mean, hey, that's not the Word of God. It means study it out. If you're wrong, let the Holy Spirit write you. If you're right, then you're grounded and rooted in what you know. Do the lead, do the people, person, spirit, lead you to Father and Jesus Christ or away? That's a biggie. If you listen after a while, if it's somebody that has an eye issue, it's going to show up. All glory goes to Father God through Jesus Christ. Everything we do is to glorify Father God. We do it through the power of Jesus Christ in His name and His great beautiful, marvelous sacrifice. But it's to glorify Father God in heaven. And we need to make sure everything we do also leads people to salvation. Not away from Jesus Christ, not away from Father God. So you have to try, test, and examine. Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove, test, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? You can approve Philippians 1, 9, 10 also. So again, renewing your mind. How do you renew, renew your mind? You have the mind of Christ. How do you renew it? Praying. Conversing with God. Putting the word in praise and worship. Fellowship with Father God and Jesus Christ. Renewing the mind. Because we're supernaturally in tune with the Lord. The spirit realm. Seek the answer in prayer of the spirit you're trying in someone. James 1, 5, Matthew 7, 7, Jeremiah 33, 3. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me and I will answer thee and shew thee great and mighty things. Shew, show you great and mighty things thou knowest not. In other words, ask me, daughter, and I will tell you. Seek me. Matthew 7, 7. Ask and you shall find. Seek. Ask. And it will be given seeking you shall find knock and the door will be open so there's many many places he tells us to ask and a lot of times we don't have because we don't ask now i ask you take this to jesus christ in prayer thank you lord try and test and discern this know that in all things Father God and Jesus Christ have made a way for everything we are going through will ever go through. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, I believe it is. See, Father God does not tempt us. When we sin, we are first drawn away. Lust is conceived and turns into sin. But in every temptation, Father God has made a way. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Which means in everything you're ever going to go through, there is a way out if you will trust Father God and Jesus Christ without you having to fall into sin. Now, I know there's, there's mercy and grace given if you do fall. It just means just men fall seven times and get back up. That's in Proverbs. Okay, the key is you get back up. But there also comes a time, according to Jude, 24, to him who is able to keep you from falling. Total, absolute obedience and surrender to him. And he can keep you from falling. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. But if you do fall, we have a navigate with the Savior. Because none of us are perfect. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. You know, we all get tempted and tried. But God is faithful. And Deuteronomy 7, 9 is another good one for that. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. 
So in other words, he's not going to take the temptation away. He's going to allow you to make the choice. But he will give you the strength to bear and go through it. Conquer it. Why? You're supposed to be a conqueror. More than a conqueror through Jesus Christ in Romans 8, 31. We are made more than conquerors. And in Revelations 12, 11, we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Hallelujah. <laughs> Everything we need has been provided for us as children of God. We just don't walk in it. Because so many are still in love with the world. And Jesus Christ has paid it all. He's done everything. He gave everything he could so you could go free. And you know when you accept Jesus Christ into your heart and he becomes your Lord and then you start following in the world again, stepping, trying to straddle the fence, you're being unfaithful to him. And He gave you everything. Not only everything you need for this life. He's preparing a home. Mansions actually mean an abode, a place. To where when it's all said and done. And sin and darkness and all evil is eradicated. And the new Jerusalem comes down. We will be in perfect peace with Him. Forever able to Worship at Jesus Christ's feet and Father God. Cast our crowns down and say, Holy, holy, holy. It'll all be worth it. Jesus Christ tells me that all the time. Daughter, I promise you, it will all be worth it. And I believe Him. He cannot lie. So hold on. Don't let go of what you know. But any time you hear something you're not sure of, or if you know it's wrong, I still say study it out. And ask Holy Spirit, that's what I do, even though I know things that's come through Telegram is 100% not right, I still take the time to stop and say, lead me to Scripture, Lord. Lead me to your truth. Because I'm not perfect. And I've had to unlearn a lot of what I was taught. Because what I learned in the churches was not always right. Actually, a lot of it's wrong. Oh, no, don't say that about the church. Well, I'll give you an example. This is the easiest one. I was told repeatedly by all the churches I've been to, by my educated, college-educated sister, Bible study college, by people upon people, even in, in since I came into this ministry when I was in Burning Bride and others, even in Pastor Dana's site when I was on his site, God will never give a date. That's wrong. That is a doctrinal error. And I asked the Lord about it, and He took me immediately to 2 Kings chapter 2. Elijah knew the exact date Jesus that, that Father God was sending the chariot of fire for him. So did Elisha. So did, I think it was 50 students of the school of prophecy. It was not a hidden deal. They all knew the date. This is the day you're going to be taken up. Do you not know this is the date that your master is going to be carried away? And there's many, many more verses. If you will seek and ask the Lord for the truth. So yes, I am teachable. But understand this. If what you're trying to teach me turns out to be false, fake, I will spit it out. I will regurgitate it. I will ask the Lord to forever permanently cement the truth of that subject in my heart and mind. So I don't have to deal with that garbage anymore. I don't want false. I don't want fake. I want the true word of God. And I understand that we're all learning. And it's not for one person to understand it all. But things that come toward me, I lay it for Jesus Christ. I don't answer before I, I ask the Lord about everything. The Lord being the Lord Jesus Christ. I try test 
discern, prove everything. Even people that I have to deal with in sights, in, you know, I know who's who, and I thank God for that. Because I, I, I take people, and I don't mean this is, it's just you need to know who labors among you. You need to know your enemy. That's why I said I've been going through discerning and trying and testing, asking the Lord to pull back Luke 8, 17, praying Luke 8, 17, whatever is hidden must be revealed. More or less, it's what it basically means. And I said, Lord, how do I do this? He said, look at it as an onion. Peel back the layers. Ask for the layers of deceptions and veils and lies to be removed and the truth to be exposed. And when I started doing that, yeah. So, and I found, you know, many things. And that's why I said a lot of times, be careful of Greeks bearing gifts. That's a phrase from history, but yeah. He showed me things upon things upon things. Because I ask, too. Another thing you have to ask. And then be willing to accept it. You know? Oh, this person I went to church with 25 years ago, on fire for the Lord, is really a witch? Show me, Lord. Prove this to me, you know. And then he'll start revealing. And that's just an example. That's just, you know. And he'll start showing you this. I'm going to say one more thing because the Lord told me to do this. I'm going to wrap it up unless he says otherwise. When you really get into study and you understand the enemy, those that have infiltrated the church will be the ones that's right there for you. When your world's falling apart, they'll be right there for you. They'll watch your children. They'll have your back. You know, they'll they'll give you money if needed. They'll They'll be the support of everything you need when really they're the one that caused it. That's how they stay right in the middle of it. Where they can keep it stern up. And I'm talking about the witches that will pray curses and, and things and be in your home. And because they have access to your home or access to your life. They can manipulate. And again, manipulation is the spirit of witchcraft at work. And I mean there's, there's a spirit of witchcraft, manipulation, control, things like that. And then there's witchcraft itself in which the enemy works in demons. They send their curses, they send their charms with the demons. That's called witchcraft. Please pray about this. Take it to Jesus Christ in prayer. Try and test it. How do I know about this? I've had to deal with it one-on-one. -on -one. I'm going to have to go. Critters are starting to come out. <laughs> God created everything for a reason. All right, stay in the blood of Jesus Christ always. Pray about this word. As I said, this word shook me, and I don't get shaken very much. He was furious, and he was angry. Jesus Christ was righteously angry. And I was like, Lord, what's going on? What's going on, Lord? You know, because I was praying for the watchman, and I was praying for brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, and then he just... It's almost time and he's trying to get his church ready. And many of them are refusing to. To listen. God bless. Bye bye.